What's up you guys? Jermaine and Edith here with Memories Amusement. Today we're not at an amusement park. It is Memorial Day weekend. We decided to do something different. We decided to check out the desert. Just got off the 15 freeway north over uh we're by we're actually by baker so we stopped by this place called zizix you may have seen it on the road you know that sign right mm -hmm. z z y z x or whatever so we're excited because this is actually the road that leads to zizix so we're gonna go check that out but look at this it's beautiful it's a beautiful scenery zizix is actually a former resort that is now being owned by cal state of the desert or something like that for desert studies so it's actually a really cool destination. Oh no, no. Is it locked? It looks closed. It's closed. It's closed. We drove all this way for this. It's closed. That's a bummer. Let's see. It's the end of the road. Boo! Let's check it out real quick though. So I guess this is the road that takes you to the resort that used to be a resort that's now a uh, study for desert arts for Cal State, the Cal State system. Kind of sad. I'm bummed. But at the same time, we can see this right here. This is cool. Unfortunately, it's closed. So looks like we weren't the only ones that got their bar their bubble bursting because unfortunately those people over there same thing all right you guys so quick history on this place Curtis house springer rented area from the government actually acquired land from the government on a mining permit back in 1944. however he wasn't really mining he wanted to make a holistic resort spa a holistic killing spa he used actually a lot of the minerals from the dry lake to you know make people feel better Plus the desert sun, the desert heat, the clearness of the uh, everything out here. You know, it was a good location for everyone to come. But because it was a uh, grant for mining in the 70s, the government took over the land again because he wasn't mining. He was actually trying to make it a resort with no mining at all. However, that didn't stop. You know, he still tried to continue the resort until the mid 80s until he passed away. Unfortunately, it never happened. But the California State University system ended up acquiring the land and making it into a desert studies research center so unfortunately we can't go there however here are some pictures and some information on what's going on out there when it's open because it's actually a pretty cool location I Curtis House Springer made up the name Zizix and gave it to the area in 1944 claiming it to be the last word in the English language he established the Zizix Mineral Springs and Health Spa in 1944 at the spa which was federal land after filing mining claims for 12,000 acres surrounding the springs. He used the springs to bottle his water and provide drinks for travelers throughout the desert. Springer also imported animals from around the country to attract more families to visit his ranch. He used his Isaacs until 1974 when the land was reclaimed by the government. I hope you guys like that information on uh, Zizek's Mineral Springs slash the study center slash Mr. Howell. So unfortunately you guys it was closed but that doesn't mean it's going to damper our day because we can still go do something else. That sucks because we're going to leave now and we're going to go you know somewhere else though. It's not the day's not over. We're going to have a good day. However, I promise you guys we are going to go back there one day when it's open and we're going to check it out. Does that sound good? Yes. All right you guys. So unfortunately that was a little quick glimpse of what Zizix is. Maybe we'll be able to go and check it out. However, right now we're gonna drive a few more minutes up the up the road to go get some jerky and see some aliens. Let's go on a ride. About 10 minutes up the road, up to 15, we hit Baker. Baker is a tourist destination if you're traveling to or from Vegas, to be honest. It's a small town, nothing really major. It's got a few claims to frame. It's got the uh, world's largest thermometer, which we'll check out right now. And it's also got alien jerky, which is pretty cool. But the world's largest thermometer is coming up right now so we'll go and stop in front of that guy and check it out uh, we drove to baker and baker is actually a cool spot there is this cool thing here called the world's largest thermometer so here it is 
Look at that guy. That guy is tall. What's this? Is it really hot enough to cook an egg outside? Skillet temperatures would have to be 158 degrees. Come inside temperature 134 gift shop to see what the current skillet temperature is. Huh, that's interesting. So it's not just a huge thermometer. It's actually a nice little skillet thing right there, whatever that is. Let's see what this plaque says. Dedicated on this Saturday, October 11, 2014 to Willis and Barbara Heron, original owners, founders of the world's tallest thermometer, Fax. Built in 1991, it's 134 feet tall. Preservatives of the world's hottest recorded temperature on July 10, 1913 in Death Valley, California at 134 degrees. It was rebuilt in 1922 after it fell. Sold in 2000, Heron's widow, Barbara Heron, regained ownership and prepared and repaired the thermometer in 2014, dubbed the Big Fix. Relit on July 10th, 2014. So this has been here since 1913. However, it got an upgrade, an upgrade in 2014. So that's cool. Let me see if I can get a better, better shot of it somewhere, somehow. Let's see. Look at that, you guys. That's pretty cool. They also have a gift shop, so we'll go in the gift shop right now and check it out as well. But hey, we're here, we're in the desert, we're driving around. Why not see something we've never seen before? And I've never stopped to see this, so check it out. It's pretty cool. They also have a gift shop here. So that from a distance looked like something else. Anywho, but they beat the heat and baker. Look at that. Even this little kid is able to sport the world's tallest thermometer. We're trying to make the best of our situation. You guys, listen. Don't be mad if it doesn't go your way. If it doesn't go right, if it doesn't go your way, don't be mad if it doesn't go your way, if it doesn't go how you planned. Take a breather, figure it out, and have fun. That's what we're doing today. So no pressure, you guys. Enjoy this little adventure that we're going on because guess what? It's out the door now. It's nothing but off the cuff. So let's go. This out is pretty cool. So they got a bunch of stuff, Death Valley, a lot of Death Valley stuff. Look at those cool little guys. <laughs> a lot of little slow globes. That's cool. What's so, up? So e is getting information right now. So. These are pretty cool, you guys. There's some people that have visited. I don't know why there's international money there. I should ask, but world's tallest thermometer, the big fix. I guess these are originals. Display. Look at that old circuit breaker from its original glory days. <laughs> ask for skillet temp. There's no, it's not hot. Pressed pennies. If you guys are into pressed pennies, they even got pressed pennies here. So, a lot of cool stuff, you guys, all based on the thermometer. Not a big shop. Nice and cool inside, though. So, it's just your, your run of the mill, you know, gift shop, but with the world's tallest thermometer theming. So, you guys, on the way, or coming back from Vegas, stop and check this place out and support. Look at this, even a little miniature. Very good. Okay, what's your name, ma'am? Gabby. Gabby. Hi, Gabby. You know, my wife Edith and I messed up and went to Isaac's. It was closed. But what else is there to do in the desert? There's plenty to see and do out here. It just depends where you want to go. We're in the middle of two national parks right now. So you have, of course, Mojave this way and Death Valley that way. Um, you'll notice the difference right away. Death Valley is much drier. There's very little greenery. And Mojave is full of green. It's beautiful. The weather is nice. Okay. Just because of the altitude. So it just really depends what you're into. Okay. Perfect. So um, as far as tourists and stuff goes, you could make, make a whole day out of just being in the desert, correct? Yes. Like even just in this area, correct? Yes. There's a lot of things to see. Um, I actually have a few postcards that I can show you of some of the things in our area. Um, yes, info. You've already went to Zizek's, which is obviously close. You have Mitchell's Caverns. This is a really nice tour and it's done by the rangers. So you have to kind of plan ahead for that one. 
This one, another area that's full of caverns. And this one, I don't believe you have to be with the rangers, but it's a, it's a lot of fun to just go through and explore all the areas. Um, of course, Mojave will have a lot of the Joshua trees. It'll be a lot greener. They also have a museum slash information center. Though their hours vary, so you're gonna have to call ahead and also find out with them. Um, this one's one of the most fun things to do out here, the lava tubes, you can Ooh. just go exploring. Um, Mojave also has some small dunes. So these are just like a few things you can do. You just kind of have to plan. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Start early in the morning though, if you want to get most of it done. Stand over here because we got the reflection in you. So start in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you want to start early in the morning, um, especially depending when you're traveling out here. Because if it's middle of summer, which a lot of people do get their breaks, um, it gets really hot out here. Okay. Yeah. So average temperature during the summer? Uh, a nice day, 115. An average between 120 and 124. Last year was 124. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you're nice and cool in here at least. That's good. Yes. So good. <laughs> for now, until it gets scorching hot. Awesome. Yeah. Th Gabby, thank you so much for the information. And we're going to probably check out the lava tubes, hopefully, you know. So I what are you going to get, babe? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get this. Oh, nice. Yeah. Look at you this. Keep hydrated. A lot of water. Yes, guys. A lot of water. We actually do have a little ice chest with a bunch of water in the car. So we are prepared for that. So Gabby, thank you once again. You're welcome. All right, Edis, what'd you get? I got a hat, world's tallest thermometer. World's tallest thermometer hat. So, you ready for some more stuff? Yes. So, now we're going to head over to, oh, you can't see it, but over there, there's like a nice little spaceship with some aliens. Let's go see what they got going on over there. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. Okay, so literally, one minute away from the world's tallest, tallest thermometer is alien jerky. This place has been here forever. I remember coming here in my early 20s when I first started going to Vegas to pick up jerky and it was like a little shed. Look at this thing, now it's like the mothership for alien beef jerky. So we're gonna check it out in there. However, they do have a time travel station back here. It's not open right now, but it looks like it's an, uh, you can order things. I don't know what it is, but you can order something. Let's go check it out. Check it out, here they got pretzels, pretzel bites, Alien dog bites, pretzel dog, ice cream cone sundae. Look at that. It's actually not that expensive either. Gabby, the help us at the world's largest thermometer told us that they have a new thing going on right now. They don't know really what is going on. No trespassing. Site for hotel, for the UFO hotel. Now the UFO hotel, never heard of it, never knew, but <laughs> look at that thing. There is the hotel. Now they don't know if it's gonna be a hotel or a mall or a shopping center. They just don't know what it is yet. But this is honestly built by jerky. Not even lying, because this jerky stand has been here forever. Uh, at, since I can remember you guys, honestly. So it's expanded a lot. It's grown a lot to the point where they're making a hotel, which is kind of cool. I don't know about staying in a UFO based hotel. Maybe it's gonna be like the Star Wars hotel. You think so? With alien casts? That'd be freaking awesome. You having fun, babe? Taking a picture with the alien? Yeah. Look at there's alien right there. Well, got a picture of his backside right here. So let's let's see in the front. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that guy. Peace sign and everything. All right, you ready for some jerky? Yes. Let's go check out the jerky. Let's go. Look at these tires. It's like a, it's like a tank actually, not a ship. Look at those guys for the desert. Pretty cool. Whoa, look at this. Whoa. Look at these guys. These guys, they're looking for some trouble. You can tell. They're looking to get into something. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look at this little mini ship here. That's pretty cool. Let's see in there. What's up, dude? Look at that. So we're inside the mothership. The mothership of jerky. Look at that. So many different kinds of jerkies, you guys. What kind do you find so far? 
Honey teriyaki. Nice. And chamoy gummy bears. Atta girl. Nice, babe. Look at all this. All this is jerky right here, guys. You got your jerky over there. You got your drinks here. Some, uh, oh, chocolate soda. Interesting. Huckleberry. Then they got a huge salsa section. Check out the salsa section. They got a lot of salsa. <laughs> Look at these. Wow. <laughs> Why, of course, did I see this one? Oh, fart. <laughs> Queen of farts. I love it. That's awesome. Look at these. Don't be cruel, cool, Elvis. What's that doing there? We can get that anywhere. They also have a ton of their own merchandise. Check it out. Alien family. We got the dog. We got the kid. We got the dad. And we got the anatomically correct mom, kind of. So, anywho, nice little alien family. Some brushes. Some tree thingies. License plates. Huh. Oh, this guy, Alien Zoltar, huh? Yeah, that sums it up. So, more. So, you ready, babe? Yeah, you got your stuff? Yeah, I'll pick out a jerky. Let's see what we got, guys. Let's see what jerky they have here. No, let's do the pepper. Ooh, garlic beef. That sounds good, too. We'll try the garlic beef. How's this, babe? Garlic beef. That's actually the other one I wanted. All right, there we go. So we got garlic beef, we got honey teriyaki, and we got chamoy gummies. Sweet, I'm probably gonna get a drink too. I'm probably gonna go see. Let's go see the drinks real quick, I guess. Okay. I am a huge fan of berry sodas. So I'm gonna try this Huckleberry. They also got maple bacon. I don't know if I wanna do that. But let's try this. We're gonna try the uh, High Mountain Huckleberry drink. Just so you guys know too, it's uh, one jerky for 11 bucks or two for 20. So you're saving yourself two bucks. But uh, trust me, it's, it's good jerky. It's very hard to get in other places. I know one other place in Orange County that has it. But other than that, you guys, this is like the only place you can really get your alien jerky. So I'm excited. You excited? Oh, yeah. We're excited. We're gonna go out to see a location that was the former house of a guy that inspired uh, me to do what I'm trying to do here and Edith to, uh, just inspired her because it gave her, she, he gave her a lot of places to want to go check out too. If you guys don't know who it is, it's Hugh Hauser. He actually had a house out here in Newberry Springs called um, the Volcano House. So I guess it's a very unique house, so we're gonna go check it out since everything else we wanted to check out is closed or it didn't happen. Might as well make the best of the situation, guys. But this is our current situation. That's us behind us right there. There's no one behind us. No one in front of us. No one around. Pretty cool, huh, babe? Yeah. It's just, just a crazy drive with nothing around, a lot of sights and a lot of heat, but it feels good. So let's go see uh, this volcano house. Let's see if we can go check it out. Believe it or not, this is the road Huel Hauser drove. Crazy, huh? Mm-hmm. This is a very isolated and desolate and bumpy and no concreted road. Check it out. That's pretty crazy. Or in the words of Huel, that's amazing. If you know what I'm talking about, you guys, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. All right, you guys. So we took that road. It's literally dirt. There's no concrete or no pavement. Probably for about four miles, five miles. This is the outcome of my car right now. She's dusty, but it's okay. Because we came for this right here. Granite says no private tours, guests or private guests only. We understood that. We knew that, but... 
right here we have the volcano house it's a famous property that's been here for a while built on volcanic rock that was actually bought by Hugh Hauser a few years ago before he passed away and then uh, now Chapman University I believe owns it okay to be honest guys a lot of the stuff I do is because of Hugh Hauser so he inspired me he inspired us to try to go to different places in California we never really documented it but now we're gonna start documenting it recording it because it's our life and we want to remember things but now we can say babe who lived here Hugh Hauser, one of our time favorites. To so this is a volcano house, guys. We're going to put some information about it right now so you know what we're talking about. It's actually pretty cool, but we'll, we'll let you guys see what this is and why we love it. Construction started the volcano house in 1968. The inspiration for the volcano house was the dome shape of the San Onofre power plant. Everywhere I look, something reminds me of her. The 2,000 square foot house sits on a 60-acre parcel. It has two rooms, two bathrooms, a curved mid-century interior, plus separate two-story building with a garage and upstairs apartment. KCET legend Hugh Hauser bought the house in the early 90s and donated it to Chapman University in 2012, less than a year before his passing away. So you see, Hugh Hauser used to live there. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. You guys, this is it for the remainder of the day. So I hope you guys have a good one. On to the next adventure, you guys. We'll see where we go to next. This is Jermaine. That's Edith. Memories, amusement. We're out. We'll see you guys later.